everybody, I'm Ashi Hanspal and I'm here to share an experience. So I request you all to close your eyes. Please everyone close your eyes. Thank you. And imagine your hands on the steering wheel of a bright red Ferrari, pushing the accelerator and feeling the speed and vibration in your hands. The world just sweeps by and your adrenaline rush is exhilarating and the power you feel is simply intoxicating. I want everyone to open their eyes. Now clap if this visual was exciting. Thank you very much. This is exactly how I felt the first time I took the driving seat of my Ferrari. Though at that point, it was just a little caught, but the rush hasn't been matched ever since. This was 12th June 2019. I still remember the date I ripped the accelerator, and quite literally, if I may say so. But before all of this, you all must have some questions. Isn't she under age? Yes, I was. I just turned 18. Can she even drive a car? The classic. Do her feet even reach the accelerator? And no, they do not. I need to go all the way to Chennai one whole day prior just so I can do my seat fit and reach the accelerator. But how did all of this even start? How did I get into racing? I was nine at the time and I would eagerly wait for my dad to come back home every Sunday night after his races with all the trophies but little me never imagined that I would become a racer myself just a few years later. For a girl obsessed with Barbies and dolls and makeup, this real life Hot Wheels situation was not at all appealing. But life surprises us in the most unusual ways. Day by day, I started learning more about this peculiar world of motorsports. And you know what happened? I started growing fond of it. I couldn't believe it myself. I remember my dad making colourful notes for me with all the racing rules and how to identify a racing line. And I quote from his notes, a racing line is the fastest route of the track. As I progressed, I joined a racing academy. I started training rigorously with them day and night. And before I knew, the roaring revs of an engine were basically like oxygen for me. Entering the national championship in my debut year and winning podiums was definitely not on my list for that year. But neither was representing my country twice in the world championship the following year. But behind all of this glory, there's a lot and lot of hard work and struggles that go unseen. I would start with five of my main struggles. Managing studies, social life and racing. All of this managing so much was always a struggle for me. But having a supportive set of friends, family and a very supportive school got me through it. They were there for me whenever I needed them. But you know what I learned something rather the harsh way? Was to succeed and achieve something, there has to be sacrifice. Second, as you all know, racing is a male-dominated place. Being a girl in a male-dominated area has always gotten me unwanted critiques. It was initially very, very tough for me to just fit in and to learn with them. Because of this, I would always be lagging. But all of this, before this, I want to share a story. So mom comes with me when I drive, when I race and practice. So people would obviously watch us. And they would go to her and be like, how old is your son? How old has he been, you know, racing from? And where does he practice? And what follows is a full Bollywood movie. She would wait for me to come, open my helmet, and then they would be so shocked. And she would flick her hair and be like, it's my daughter, not my son. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now the toughness of this sport. This sport requires a lot of time and effort. 
I have traveled through COVID, not only in India, but also abroad. I've come back late from, you know, school, finished my homework, rushed to the track, whether it's five, six, seven, eight, I had to be on track. Whether it's hot, it's pouring, I'm not well, there was never a valid enough reason for my coach. But now that I look back to it, I really needed that push to succeed. And fourth, and in my opinion, the most important one, self-doubt. Self-doubt is actually very negatively impactful. When you have a series of unsatisfied results, it often tends to self-doubt. You, feel, you start feeling so unworthy that even after that, if you do succeed in something, you tend not to accept it. For me, my like everything that I would succeed in would be linked to external factors. Oh, like she would have a nice car, or the other the people that she's competing with would not be as good. But when I would fail, it would be directly linked to me and my skill set and my capabilities, which for me was so unfair. And lastly, racing is not a very popular sport in India, but surely a very, very and very expensive one. So finding a sponsorship here is a big, big trouble. Now there are five ways I cope with this. One, finding a balance and removing time for yourself, your friends, your social life. Overburdening yourself will just slow everything down and drive you faster to a burnout. Focus on yourself and improve yourself, rectify your mistakes and keep moving forward. Because at the end of the day, there's going to be no one for you but you. Finding your coping mechanism. Everybody has their own coping mechanism. For me, it's music or spending quality time with people I love. It's like a escape from reality for me. Start believing in yourself and actually putting an effort towards it. You've come so far because you deserve it and you're worth it. <laughs> this is some of my achievements that I've got in the past few years. Top 20 girls of the world, special guest in YIT in Formula One Grand Prix, outstanding women in motorsports, special felicitation by the Sports Minister of India, Impact Award 2023, Super Girl Award, guest of honor and inspirational speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have something left. And then came my toughest moment. I came across my biggest hurdle, my crash last year, where I broke my hand, I needed surgery, and intense rehab. But for me, in my head, this meant like, oh my god, I can't race. And I can't race, you know, for how long? For a whole year. And all of this was right before my prelims, before my 12th grade board examination, and my college applications. So I basically hit rock bottom. You know what I felt? I felt like I lost everything. And everyone around me was just moving forward and succeeding. And I was stuck. You know what I felt? I felt stuck. Stuck was the word that I felt. But this was not the end. I bounced back after almost a whole year, withstanding a lot of pain. And not only did I start racing again, I also won a lot in the rally championships. I kept improving, kept recovering with support of doctors, family, and friends who were again there for me always. But you know what kept me going? Hope. Never give up hope. Now I know everybody does give up hope at a point, and to be honest, even I did. But it's important to get back up. And remember, there's always something better coming your way. And everything happens for a reason. Now, I would say sky is the limit, but even sky is not the limit for us. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you all all liked my experience that drives me quite literally every single day. Thank you so much, and this was an honor to be here. This is also, I want to end with my tiny mission that I have to inspire women and elevate India in global motorsports. So the next time a girl comes here, doesn't say that it's tough to find sponsorship in India because racing will be a bigger thing in the next few years. And I will make sure of it. Thank you.